Hey guys, happy Sunday. I hope you guys are staying cool on this very hot and ridiculous day. Um, it's still really pretty out here, so I'm gonna try again to do uh, my Sunday school lesson out here, but it is so hot. So uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying a pool or um, the shade or something. Um, anyway, today we are looking at the book of Romans and we are in chapter eight and we are going to be looking at verse 12 through uh, 17, sorry, there was a bee or a wasp or something that was on my arm. Uh, we are looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 12 through verse 17. So again, we're not really focusing on really long scriptures here. We're not reading an entire chapter. Um, we're just taking it piece by piece, which is really important to do right now because everybody, I'm sure, like me, feels overwhelmed. Things are, are weird and different, and so taking things a little bit at a time is really, really helpful. So here we go. This is Romans, again, chapter 8, verse 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. Okay, so this is a very, like I said, short and sweet text, but there's a lot in here that makes it really cool. The very first thing that I want to focus on is verse 15, and that says, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. This is one of the prettiest, like, most beautiful sentences about our relationship with God in the Bible, in my opinion. It's absolutely gorgeous. And in order to understand the beauty of this text, we have to kind of dissect it a little bit. First off, it says, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into, into fear. The spirit of slavery, the Greek word for slavery here, the Greek word that is used is doulos. And doulos actually refers to the type of slavery that's more like um, indentured servitude. It is a willing kind of slavery um, where one person submits themselves to another. It is not the kind of evil slavery that um, has been thought about a lot lately. It's, it's not that. This type of slavery, the Greek word doulos, that represents a willing slavery where one person willingly gives themselves to another and submits themselves to one master and one master only. Um, and that is the kind of slavery that we're talking about here. So when it says, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, we are talking about a spirit of slavery where we have fully given ourselves to God. That's what we're talking about. We are um, fully committed. We have fully given ourselves. We are submitting ourselves willingly to God and God's will and no other God, just our God. So when we have that spirit of slavery, when we have that kind of relationship with God, when we have fully given ourselves and all of ourselves to our master who is God, then there is no reason for us to fall back into fear. And what that means is that we have by our faith, received a spirit that allows us to be fully comforted and have complete peace in our relationship with God, knowing that we are saved through our relationship with God. There is nothing that we can fear from this earth that, there's, there's nothing from this earth that we should fear. How's that? That's a little, that makes more sense. Um, so when you receive that spirit of slavery, we're talking about that full submission of ourselves to God, there is no reason for us to fall back into the fears of this world and to worry and to have anxiety. And that's really, really hard. Again, you're talking with somebody who has anxiety and who worries a lot, so I get it. But this is saying here that you can be free from that because of this type of slavery, this uh, submission of ourselves to God, that creates a freedom from fear. So it's really kind of cool. Um, and then it says, so it starts out, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. This is the beautiful part. 
spirit of adoption here refers to us being fully welcomed and accepted into the family of God as a child of God. We are not talking about here um, just being, you know, close with God, like, oh, you know, we're tight. We are talking about being in the family of God. Think about how intimate that relationship is. That is an incredibly intimate relationship to have our God be our father, to be fully adopted and welcomed into God's family through our faith and through this spirit of slavery that we now have. That is so incredibly cool. And that is such an intricate and intimate relationship for us to have with our creator. If you think about it that way, we are in a family with our creator that created literally everything we see around us. How stinking cool is that? <laughs> um, so again, I'm just gonna repeat that verse one more time um, because it, when you dissect it and you really think about it, it really is absolutely beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And um, it's just one of the coolest ways that I have read in the Bible um, to describe our relationship with God. It's just really neat. So I'll read it one more time now that we kind of know what we're talking about. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. I'm going to keep reading here um, just a little bit further. It says, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So this last little part, what does that mean? Um, to suffer with Christ so that we may also be glorified with him. To suffer with Christ, there are a lot of sentences in the Bible that talk about taking up your cross. Like, let's take up our cross and follow Jesus. This is kind of along that line of accepting the struggle that comes along with the hardcore belief in Jesus. There are things about Christianity that people do not like. People do not like. Um, there are things that we believe that they do not approve of. And when we stand up for what we believe and when we stand up for the things that Jesus taught, that is what we're talking about here when it talks about when we suffer with him. Um, persecuted Christianity, persecuted Christians have been a thing forever since Christianity came about, obviously. Um, there are still places in, that, in this world today that have persecuted Christians. Um, we are lucky enough to live in a world, in our world, our little bubble here in the United States where we can proclaim our faith and I can get on Facebook and YouTube and all these other social outlets and proclaim my belief in Jesus Christ and make these videos. We're very lucky to do that. You can't do that in some other places around the world. That's the suffering that is being talked about here. Um, you have to remember that this was not written for us particularly in the United States during this time, right this second. We are not the audience here. You have to place it from the context of who was the audience when this was written, who was reading this then. To be a Christian in biblical times, very, very, very difficult, very sketchy, very, um, you don't know if you're gonna be hated or if you're gonna be loved. It was a very kind of weird time. And so you have to remember that 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 plays a lot into the text of the Bible is the audience and what was going on in that community in that time. Now, obviously this was written for all people of all times. That's, you know, the whole point of the Bible is so that we can all learn and follow Christ. Um, so I'm not saying this wasn't written, you know, we shouldn't listen to it because it wasn't written for us. In a general context of things, yes, it was. The whole Bible was written for us to read and believe in. Um, what I was trying to get at here is that you have to think of what Christianity was like in that moment when it says, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Those people were going to suffer a lot more than we are now. Um, and, you know, obviously Christ knew that, but we still suffer today. I mean, in the United States, there are still people that will hate on you for being a Christian. There are still people that will 
um, judge you and say mean things about you and leave nasty comments on your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever, um, that still exists. And so to um, accept that and not answer with hate and judgment and anger, but to accept it and just continue to live a life like Christ, that falls under this category of if we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So if that all makes a lot of sense, I, I know I went into a little tangent there for a second. Um, everybody is going to suffer for their belief in Christ if you're doing it right. In some way, shape, or form, somebody is not going to like you if you are living your life as a Christian the way you are supposed to. And that's okay, because we are not of this world. We are of God's empire, God's kingdom. And so if you're doing your, if you're doing it right, you're not going to be liked by some people and that's all right. But that is the suffering that we're talking about here. So just to reiterate what we went over today, we have been adopted into the family of Christ, into the family of God, our creator, because of the spirit that we have now. And that spirit is referred to here as the spirit of slavery because it refers to our willing submission to God and our full hearted willingness to um, give all of ourselves to God and to no other God and just to God alone. Um, so for, from that or for that, we are adopted into God's family and we will suffer along with God, along with Christ. Um, and then we will be glorified with Christ. That is just the coolest little part. And that's the tiniest, the tiniest little piece of Romans, like the tiniest little piece. And it's so full of awesomeness and comfort and love and it's just really cool so i hope you liked that as much as i do um that verse romans 8 15 if you really liked that it's just really neat um the spirit of slavery kind of being in, taken into a different context but anyway i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned a little something please stay cool today go inside because i'm about to it's really hot out here um, and hopefully I will see you on Wednesday for our Bible study. Stay positive, you guys, and I will see you soon. Bye.